No, things are good right now. I can't believe you're a dad now. I know, right? That's I can't believe it either. Was it 2000, <laughs> 2009 or 2010 last time I, we were kind of competing together? The, the last time I competed at World was 2009. But my last few international years were 2010, 2011. And I think I did an international show in 2000. Actually, wait. Shoot. No, my last show was 2014. That's right. Really? Yeah. 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 But the last few years, I was so injury prone, I, I could barely do anything. That's that's actually why I finally called it quits. I did um, Canada or North America's Strongest Man up in Hugh, with uh, Hugo Gerard up in uh, Ottawa or Gatineau. And um, I placed really well, but I hadn't trained or competed for a full year at that point. And this was like September 2014, I think. And I was like, all right, I'll go do the show, see how I do. And I ended up doing really well. I think I got fourth or third overall. Um, like I said, hadn't trained for like a year. Um, and I'm like, you know, what? I want to get back into this. I think my injuries are healed. My first training session back from that competition, I tore my long head off the top of my bicep. So I was like, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> you know, just too many injuries. Well, one thing that, and you touched on mental health, and I'm kind of glad you brought that up because that's something I've been trying to work on a lot lately. One thing that, you know, some of the younger listeners out there, uh, if you get injured, stay away from pain medication. That was, that was also part of my downfall is I started having the surgeries and the doctor I went to just started giving me pain medicine, pain for everything. And every time I get a new injury, he'd just up the dosage rate. And for a long time, I didn't realize what it was doing to me. You know, it was, you know, opiates, they're just, uh, we know a lot more about them now than we did then, um, even though that was only, you know, 12, 13 years ago. But, you know, that made me so mentally weak. I was such a mentally strong person. And then those came into my life. And that, that was the true turning point, I think, because then uh, I didn't take care of myself as much anymore because I wasn't feeling the pain. Yeah. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't aware of my body. I wasn't, you know, and I used to be so aware of my, like I would feel every little twinge or, you know, and once you start taking those, it got me lazy. I, you know, my testosterone levels went down, your adrenal glands, you know, suffer from it. Like it's just, it's just bad, bad news. And it made me a, a very mentally weak person. And, that's something that I, to this day, I'm still, you know, uh, thank God I'm not anywhere near that point anymore. But it's, it's, I think that'll be a battle for the rest of my life now because of those few years. Yeah. So that, that's the other thing I'd really, you know, ugh, that if I could tell any young athlete right now, is one thing I would say, if you get hurt, just stay away from pain medication. It's just uh, try it, as much as you can. It's funny you say, you talk about that because it it's a great point. I, I remember... You and your, uh, like, I mean, <laughs> you're so young anyway, but like you, 19 to sort of 23, I guess, you were a machine. You'd never give up. You were fighting all the time. I remember some of those last competitions. I think we were in Abu Dhabi and you just weren't there mentally at all. You yep. know, you were, you were paranoid. You were going to, I mean, you were actually paranoid. You were going to hurt yourself before you'd even touched the kit. You guys were having, this is how awesome you guys were to me. You guys even though we were competing against me for money and that was pretty decent prize money for that kind of show. That show that wasn't point. too bad. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you guys like literally having to give me pep talks before every event, like Kev, get out of your own fucking head. Like yeah. you're going to be okay. Like you're going to be fine. Like don't in every single event, you guys would have to talk me off the ledge, you know? And, it, and that's what I mean. I became so mentally weak and, mm. and maybe it wasn't all because of pain medicine, but it just, if I could do it over again, I would run so far and fast from those things. Like, oh, and, and you're absolutely right. Towards the end, yeah, I don't know if it was, some of it was from the injuries too, but if I was doing an endurance event or something that was longer than just, you know, one press or whatever, if I felt any twinge, I'd just drop it, you know, because I was so scared I was going to get hurt again. And because I couldn't really feel what was going on, I didn't really know what, what I was feeling. So I would just got scared and would drop the weight. So yeah, it's just, 
Those are no good. But. Well, it's something that people can learn from because, I mean, I get asked all the time. People message me when they get injured and they're like, what can I do? What can I take? I've got a competition in three, six weeks time, whatever it might be. And my answer is always, there's always another Perfect. competition. Yes. Don't, don't rush right. to get back because that's the beginning of the downward spiral. You, you rush to get back, you compensate in terms of movement, yep. and then something else goes ping. I always tell myself, you know, I want to get into it just for fun, but I, I don't know if I could do it just for fun anymore. You know, that's, like, that's I just idea. built, yeah, it, because I'm an all or nothing kind of guy. You know, I, I did just build a gym in my garage and, you know, I, I try not to go over a plate on like any exercise for the most part. I'm just trying to stay in shape right now, you know? Um, but yeah, it, it, when I first stopped, it was really hard for me to even watch world's strongest man because like I knew I had more left in the tank, but I didn't set myself up to succeed. You know, one of the, one of my issues that I really regret is I wish I wasn't the youngest person. Like I wish I had waited well, this because is this is something I really wanted to ask you, to be honest. And I, I've used you as an example to a lot of the youngsters that I train and when I'm kind of giving advice. Sometimes I think you can do it too quickly. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. I'll, let you, I'll, I'll let you talk about it because you're the man that's yeah. lived through it. But you, you, was it 19 you were at World's Strongest Man? So I was 20 years old, but I turned 20 years old like a month and six days or something like that. Like, so, yeah, basically 19. Um, but there's several reasons why I wish I waited. One, because I pushed my body past what it was far past the limits. And, and that's what you have to do in these kind of sports. But I mean, far past the limits of what, how young of a body I had. My, my tendons weren't even fully grown yet. and They're already getting torn off, you know. And so there was that issue. But then there was also the issue of I hadn't started a career yet like a lot of guys. So with my parents, don't get me wrong, my parents were very supportive, but they didn't really like the sport. You know, towards when I, especially when I started getting injuries, they kind of wanted me out of it, you know, so they were happy to see me stop. So without having, being in college, you know, never starting a real corporate job or anything like that, or, you know, whatever, just a real nine to five job, I didn't really have a lot of income. So I was, living off of my strongman earnings, you know, my strongman, um, you know, endorsements, sponsorships. And so every time I would get hurt, you know, there goes my money. So I didn't have a backup plan because I, I started too young. You know, I wasn't, I didn't have a bank account from, you know, corporate America or from being there, uh, you know, in the construction yard for so many years. I, I didn't have that. So when I got injured, it was a race to get back so I could start making that sponsorship money again. So I could start making, you know, that prize money again. And so every time I get hurt, I would try to rush back in that sense. So I was too young physically. I was too young, you know, in just life, you know, not having the life experience and just too young mentally too. I, I had a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. We all had a lot of fun, yeah, especially yeah. in those days. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I, I don't have any regrets because it was a phenomenal time in my life. I'll never forget it. But if I could do it over again, I, I probably would wait a few more years and just kind of take my time, let my body grow, you know, you know, maybe even work, you know, a corporate job for a little while or, you know, just doing something else to build up some money because that's, you know, I didn't have the money at that point to build a gym like a lot of you guys did or to, you know, to pay for all this extra equipment and all that stuff because basically all my money that was coming in was strongman earnings and it was going right back into the sport basically. So it's funny. I mean, you, you, your story is exactly the same as guys like myself, Terry Hollands, you know, a lot of us from, from kind of those days where we were trying to do the sport professionally Yes. and killing ourselves to do it. Yep. I mean, some of those stories then about you were rushing back to compete. I did exactly the same thing. I'd get an injury and I'd be like, Oh, I've got to compete in six weeks time. Otherwise I'm going to lose out. And you know, when you're doing it to pay the bills, it's, it starts putting a lot of pressure on and then you stop enjoying it as well. 100%. It, it now, it wasn't, I'm doing this because I love to do it. I'm doing this because I have to do it. Absolutely. But well, let's move on to, to now because obviously, I mean, you say 2014 was the last time you competed. Yeah, that was my last competition. Up and I, remember, I remember young, excited Kevin. You're a dad now. You're married. You, you're working. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us what you're up to. So my wife, Carly, um, 
we've been married for three years now. Um, well, shoot, it's going to be coming up on four, I think. Um, Don't get that wrong. Time, time, <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a little girl who's three, Ava, and I have a son, Aiden, um, who's 16 months old right now. Um, it, it's just awesome. I, I love being a dad. It is so stressful. Good and choice of name. Crazy. Well. My oldest oh. daughter's an Ava, so. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I love that name. I love that name. Ava Murray. Yep. Uh, and then uh, it, it's just wonderful being a dad. I, I absolutely love it. It is so hard. It's so challenging. They don't tell you how hard it is. Um, it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. World's strongest man is a cakewalk yeah. compared to being a parent. I've, but, I've, sorry, I've, I've literally just started a 12-week um, transformation diet. So I've got to do cardio and stuff like that. I'm, eat, I'm eating really clean. And today I took my um, two and a half year old to soft play. Going around a, a soft play with a two and a half year old <laughs> is way, way harder than 40 it's, minutes on the treadmill or something like that. Seriously. It's I was, so hard. I was di- I'm was way too big for, for these kind of things. And she's trying well, to get especially because. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I don't yeah, know, we're, we're having to bend over and get down yeah. to them. And it's like, oh, wait, no, that hurts. And, <laughs> and now because I've got like knee issues and ankle issues and you're trying to crawl <laughs> along. It's, get a camera in there. People would be absolutely. Oh. Bad that they would be dying they'd be in we, stitches but we we do it no matter what just to keep them happy <laughs> yep and uh so that that's my home life um and i actually met carly um so when i stopped competing i was like you know i, I got time to use my degree and so i have a degree in supply chain management and i started working at uh staples do you guys have staples over we know in, we know of staples yeah 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 so their corporate office is uh, so and also, I moved back to the East Coast after Arizona. So I moved back to the East Coast in about 2013, I think it was. Um, started working at Staples Corporate Home Office, uh, using my degree, and kind of fell in love with the world of data, um, believe it or not, uh, yep. which kind of data, and I, I guess it kind of goes together because, you know, being strength athletes, we always want to get better. In order to get better, you have to know you have to track your progress. So that's kind of looking at the data and analyzing it. And so there I, I kind of fell in love with the world of data and analysis. And um, I, I've gone that direction. I've even gotten some more schooling um, with uh, Harvard Extension School and uh, some professional certifications in data science. And, uh, and now I'm a manager of uh, uh, merchandise planning, data analytics, and uh, business intelligence tools for this company called uh, Global Partners. And uh, I absolutely love it. I, I love it. I'm such a nerd now. Like, all I want to do is talk about, like, formulas and codes <laughs> and, like, you know, how do I write this code? How do I write this formula? And, uh, how do I make this model? How do, you know, how do I combine these two data sets? You know, it, it's just, I, I absolutely love it. I, well, I, think, absolutely I, think, love it. I think it's great that you've got something that, you're passionate and interested about because it goes back to that thing we said about earlier with athletes if we don't have something to focus yes. on you can go in that you know that spiral and i think it's, it's just important to have whatever it might be for, for anyone if, if a different sport or some kind of hobby or work and business you know whatever your passion is as long as you've got something that gets you out of bed in the morning keeps you driving Absolutely. forward 